Hey fellas, I forgot the wave last time, I think. <clears throat> Welcome to part two of the F-15E build. Well, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not calling this a build anymore. <clears throat> I didn't show much building. In my videos, I like to uh, give you material that uh, I haven't shown before or just to show you how I do things and um, what works for me. And to be honest with you, this thing went together pretty well. There wasn't really anything that that I felt uh, I should devote video time to. Now, I did have uh, uh, a commenter ask me to go more in-depth on how I paint my bases of the artwork. And so I've devoted this video basically to that. So the first, uh, I guess, 20 minutes of video is, is going a little bit more in-depth on, on how I paint them. Keep in mind, I am not a professional artist. So I'm learning and I'm having fun with it. And that's all that really matters is, is that you have fun building models and, and you know, doing whatever type of a thing that you do uh, with your hands. Have fun with it. That's what it's all about. Uh, so uh, if you want to skip to the end where you get to see the finished model, then I'll put a timestamp here. And if you want to see how I paint the base, then uh, just continue with the video. Uh, and I will be putting this one up on eBay. I always start my eBay auctions at like a dollar. So somebody could get this plane for a dollar plus shipping. I'll probably add $20 for shipping. I usually don't. It usually costs more to ship than, than 20 bucks. So, but I figure that's that's fair enough. I eat, I eat uh, a lot of the shipping costs. And I had somebody complain one time about, he charged $20 to ship a model, he could ship that for $5. <laughs> the, the guy never shipped a model. You know, sometimes I ship these things, it costs me like 50 bucks. So, all right, I'll quit yapping and complaining about stupid people. So, uh, let's get on with the video. So what I've done here is I've stained the sides with a, a darker stain, then I went over the uh, just the edges with a clear coat. I let that cure, then I masked those off, and then I took some Rust-Oleum white primer and sprayed the top. I sanded it, sprayed it again, and so I got a nice smooth finish of a real durable white primer. Now the white's gonna be the white parts of my flag. So then what I did is I took an image of a flag off of Google Images, put it into my Cricut vinyl cutter, if you don't know what that is, I've got a video showing uh, how I use it, how I make masks with it. So I put it in there and uh, adjusted the size and got just the right size for the uh, the base. And uh, put some uh, Tamiya sticker sheet in there, cut out the mask, slapped it on here. I labeled each one of the white stripes so I didn't get confused. Left those on and now I'm going to come in and paint the red portions of the flag. Once that's done, I'll lift up, I'll mask this area off, and then I'll uh, pull up the blue area, and I'll paint the blue and leave the stars there that uh, will remain white. So that's where I'm at, and uh, I will see you once I get the red and blue down. So I've got my base coats down. <coughs> And uh, it looks really flat. This is really not going to do it. So we're going to add some highlights and some shading. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not feeling that good. And here's how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to put my dark side here. So I'm imagining that the flag comes up. Well, not really imagining because that's the way my lines are going. But the flag comes up, folds around in under itself and then comes up and is wavy. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some black right along here, some uh, a little bit of black in here, and maybe some down along here, and then I'll come in with some white and add some highlights on the raised areas. So I'm just gonna take some masking tape and come along and mask off this side I want to make sure that I err on the side of, of the left here when I mask this. I know this isn't really a 
100% straight, but we'll make do. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm going to take some wider tape. I'm going to come along here, and here's a little trick that I learned from watching some of the airbrush people. I may have showed this before, but instead of masking off a bunch of stuff, what you can do is you can build a dam. I promised my kids I was going to watch my cussing, so dam isn't actually... Uh, I'm using it in a, in a different <laughs> way than I normally do. So I'm going to dam off this area by folding my tape up. I think I may have shown this before. And that way it's going to stop the overspray from coming up. Now I've got some diluted black paint. And I'm just using regular XF1 from Tamiya. And I've got it diluted with alcohol. And I'm going to come along. And I'm going to gradually build up. Build. Put my dam back a little farther. And I'm going to gradually build up right along here. And for this line, I'm spraying right at the edge of the tape. Now I could probably make this a little less diluted. Which I may come back and do that in a bit. I may take some little less diluted black and make a real fine line right along there. But right now, since I've got it already diluted, I'm just coming in and shading this part like so. Maybe I want to bring it out just a little bit more. Okay. Now for this part, I'm not going to mask anything off because it's not a real sharp Curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray down, and again, this isn't the easiest thing to do on camera. I'm just going to come in here and hit where those, where that curve is. And gradually build it up. like so, and you can see how that just really popped that out. And I'll probably come along here and maybe just do a little bit. Right along the bottom. And you can see how that really makes a difference, especially over here where you, it, it went from just uh, an, an odd looking masking job to really made that pop out. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put a little bit more black paint. I'm going to come in here and do a real fine line to really darken that area up where it's not real even. Since this is such a a sharp cutoff and I want to pretty much I want to even it up. Now I'm going to I got I add a little bit more black paint. stark contrast. So let's pull this tape up and see what we got. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. 
and I may add a little bit more in here, but before I do that, I, eh, let's, let's see. Let's see what we got. Let's just play with it. Now, it's easy to ruin it if you go a little too much. And again, this is with isopropyl alcohol, so I can dilute it a lot more. Not sure that I like that, but you know, we'll live with it. Yeah, we can live with it because I'm going to weather this. <clears throat> now, it may seem kind of odd that I'm going to weather and make this look a little aged with, um, with, with a modern jet. But I just like the looks of it, and I don't really want to have just a plain, you know, American flag out here. I am going to kind of yellow it a little bit, and I'll show you how I do that. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to go around the edges with the black, and I want to darken the edge. And it's okay if I get it on, uh, you know, if I overspray. Because I, I want a clean edge. I want to kind of clean this area up. And it helps to center the, the artwork when you do this. So basically, I'm just coming along the edge and I'm spraying down at an angle. I really think this just adds to it. it. Really makes the artwork pop and it cleans up the edges at the same time. Now, I've already peeled up the tape since I initially painted this white and I do have a little bit of bleed through because I was recklessly spraying the white paint, the white primer coat. So I am going to have to do a little bit of touch up on the wood and I'll do that just with some paint. I think I can hide it. And you know what? With this, I don't know if I don't know if I will uh I may not actually weather this. I don't know. We'll see what it looks like when I'm done, but just adding this black around the edges kind of I don't know. It makes it look a little better in my opinion. Okay, now I'm going to put the black away and I'm going to come in with some white and I'm going to add some highlights like right along here. I may even come back in here with some black. It may not show up, but... Okay, so I've got some white, and you want to really be careful with the white because it'll really wash it out if you're not careful. So I'm going to use this area and highlight here just right along the top. And then maybe right along the top here. And again, it doesn't take much. And that'll just help bring some of this to life. I always can't, I always have to restrain myself. I think that looks pretty cool. All right. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of Bombay ink. So what I've got now is I've got some of this uh, Bombay India ink, and this is like a yellow ochre. So I'm going to do this to age it. And uh, so yes, I am going to age this a little bit. So sometimes when you do these things, you just got to 
you just got to do what you feel like doing. <laughs> and this is art. There's no, there's no set, set uh, rules. We can just do what we want. So this is going to, I'm going to start off. Ooh. I've got this really diluted. And I'm going to start off by going around the edges. And darkening them up, darkening up those edges. And what's nice about the ink is that this won't affect the colors. It will it will pretty much stain the white and not have too much of effect on the darker colors, like you would see with if you used a, a regular opaque paint. Even if you dilute the paint, it's still going to dull down. Still gonna dull the uh, the darker colors. I'm gonna come in here and get a hair dryer. Since I've got this really diluted, it's really going on wet and staying wet. Now I dilute this. So I dilute this with a Vallejo thinner. So it does act a little bit different than it would be if I could dilute it with an isopropyl alcohol. Now one thing that I've noticed with this image that I had cut out, the stars stop right here. I think it would have been better if I'd have used an image or corrected it and had some of the stars halfway along this crease and I could probably still change it but uh, I don't know I'm just gonna have to live with that I'll know next time just yellowing up this area especially around the edges where we get a little bit darker a little more yellow I'm gonna try to leave the the white portions up here, the highlighted areas, still leave those untouched. The star up there is kind of cockeyed. I was going to cover that up, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Now what I what I planned on doing, what I think I'm going to do, is I'm going to come along the edges with like maybe a brown, a mixture of brown and NATO black. I'm going to come along and bring some of this side in a little bit. So it's almost like I've got a feathered edge around the edges of the, of the base. And that's also going to cover up this crappy star that I kind of half, half did. So now I've got my brown. I'm gonna come along and I'm gonna hit the edges. I'm gonna darken these edges up with a really diluted brown. And I don't wanna go real heavy on it. But I do wanna feather out the edge of this base. Now this is paint, and I do have it diluted with isopropyl alcohol. So it should dry really quick. And I'm just coming around the edges. Now I'm going to go in with some more black and just do black this time. And I'm really going to darken this edge right here with some black.
So there we have it. There is my base. I think I'm going to stop there. Now what I'll do is I'll put a flat coat on it. And get a little bit of spots where my airbrush threw it up, but I'm not going to touch it. It's okay. Now I'll put a flat coat on it. And then we'll peel all this up and it should be finished. But that's basically how I do it. So here it is. I am uh, I'm pretty happy with it overall. The base might be a tad too big, but since it's flying over Old Glory, I think, you know, it's fine. The uh, <laughs> I, I didn't really have any smaller bases, so I'm kind of stuck with this bigger one. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the kit. It went together pretty well. Other than the issue with the canopy, it, it looks okay, actually. I, you know, when, when you get down and, and you look real closely at it, um, you know, when it's off the model, like I showed in the last video, the distortions really look bad, but when you get it on the plane, they kind of go away. The uh, Obviously, this one didn't come with pilots, so I had to put pilots in, and uh, that was a bit of a pain. The uh, some of the the fit overall, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, most of the Revel kits I've built don't really have very good fit. There was a little bit of flash in places, but that's you know to be expected. Uh, because this is my first one, <clears throat> uh, first time building this model. I think the next one that I do, I'll I'll be able to zip right through it, and uh, I think uh, you know I'll be able to address those problems now. One of my commenters said that he had issues with fitting the forward part of the fuselage up with the rear. I didn't have that issue. Now, I did have to sand just a little bit along the rear fuselage here where the intakes are. Otherwise, it was pushing the, the forward fuselage over a little bit to the left. You know, a few strokes with the, the sanding stick, and it fits in there perfectly. I, I don't really have any steps on the top or the bottom. Might be a tad bit of a step here, but you don't you can't even see it. The uh, the exhaust nozzles, uh, they were a bit of a pain with these little bitty, uh, little bitty um, actuator rods or whatever they are. But, uh, you know, overall they look good and there's a lot of good detail in it. The, uh, so, I mean, I really don't have too many bad things to say about the kit. And uh, the paint job, I black based it. And uh, I used a, a gray color to do my marbling layer. And then went over it with the gunship gray. Then I also did a salt technique and sprayed a lighter coat. It's not something that's really stark and noticeable, but when you get up close, you can you can see some of the variation in the in the uh, in the paint from the salt technique, and I, I really like that subtlety. The panel lines. I didn't really do a panel line wash on the whole plane. <clears throat> I just picked out different panels with different colors. And some show up more than others. I used uh, a uh, blue dirt, which is just a slighter gray than, than a little bit darker gray than what the, the paint job is. And those don't show up very well. But I did pick out some based on reference pictures to, uh, to highlight with a light gray. And you can see here and here, just along, just to give it a, a more realistic look. I also took a dark a dark wash and hit some but those again don't show up against this dark paint unless you get real close did do a little bit of streaking and a little bit of oil work but not much i think it looks cool just as is the uh the base oh, since we spent most of the time on the this video on the base let's see if i can get this off of here without breaking anything um I'm really happy with how that turned out. Like I said, it is a little bit big, but, uh, you know, is what it is. I've got felt on the bottom, like I do with all my bases. Kind of gives it a nice finished look. The, uh, let's take a look at the bottom. I didn't do much weathering on the bottom. I figure you're not going to see much of it anyway. But uh, there's the metal exhaust, which is... I always like doing the metal exhaust on these F-15s. And there's a lot of space to to do some creative stuff. And I didn't overly do it. I just did some shading with um, different metallics <clears throat> and some uh, transparent colors from Tamiya. The, the uh, fuel tanks and missiles come apart in one piece. They're attached with magnets. I've got like three magnets here and then three magnets on here. 
So they pop on and off. The, uh, the pods also pop on and off with magnets. And one thing that I did with this one is I used some of that uh, nail, nail foil or nail film and it gives that iridescent look because I guess there's supposed to be some kind of a, a glass piece right there, I guess, where cameras or something are. But uh, these pop on and off. There's the intakes. Although I didn't completely remove the seam, you really can't see it. But it does look pretty cool in there with the white and then the, uh, the turbines in the back. So I think that looks really cool. Uh, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the kit. I'll probably grab another one and build another one. And, uh, you know, I've always wanted to, to paint one of these with the aggressor camouflage scheme. Like that blue and gray and white scheme. And, uh, I don't know. That might be an idea. If I can get this stupid thing on the base. So, there it is. And like I said, I'm going to be listing this one for sale on eBay. I'm going to get it boxed up before I list it and uh, put a picture of how I box this, this up so people are more comfortable with buying it. But uh, I appreciate you watching. Here's some pictures, and I'll see you on the next episode.